How's it guys, Monash here and today we have Falcon against Abyss of Legends Collector. Now this is the most difficult fight in Abyss, in fact it's probably the most difficult fight in the entire game. Just because of how specific it is, there are very few good counters for it and even the best counters are not gonna have an easy time against him. As of right now, I think Aegon is the only champ who can actually solo this fight. But he does need to be rank 3, be boosted pretty hard, have the Heimdall and Angela synergies and then you need to play pretty much perfectly or flawlessly and not make any mistakes while also maximizing your damage per hit by actually getting hit quite regularly to get those big boy furies and hopefully don't get unlucky by bad RNG or AI behavior. So you basically need to have a 1 in a thousand or maybe 1 in a hundred type of run if you're really that good. But I mean getting it down in about 4 revise with the rank 3 Aegon is still really good. I mean I'd say anything below 10 revise with the 5 star would be pretty solid for most people. So I am gonna break down this falcon fight but I also want to talk about just how to fight the collector in general. So the first thing you ideally want is a champ who can easily counter evade. The collector is of the superior class so you'll always have class disadvantage in this fight which means he has a relatively high chance to evade. And doing this fight without an evade counter can be extremely frustrating. He can evade almost every other combo you throw at him and then just punish you or just waste your charges. And it just makes a difficult fight even more difficult. But you can't just use any evade counter with high damage because the other thing about this fight is that he does have tenacity. It's not 100% but it's still fairly high, above 50% at least. So he can quite easily shrug off any slow debuff or cold snap or any other damaging debuff or even non-damaging which does have an evade countering property. So champs who rely on damage over time will also not be having a very good time against him. But now you also don't want to be using a champ who can hit too hard like Proxima when she's ramped up because when he's at 85% he gets a protection. So he will no longer be able to take more than 1% of his max health as damage. And when you hit the cap, he becomes unstoppable for 5 seconds with a 10 second cooldown. And this is just the first part of his Abyssal ability or his Abyss Fractures, which basically just gives him more abilities as he loses health throughout the fight. So at 85% he gets the protection, at 70% he gets a 2250 increase to his crit rating and his armor rating. At 55% he becomes a Quake and Ghost counter because that's when he can't miss or be evaded. He also can't be auto blocked and ignores 25% of your block proficiency on top of already having 1000 block penetration just due to having class advantage so yeah fun times. Then at 40% he becomes immune to all bleed, poison, incinerate, stun and power lock debuffs. At 25% he periodically becomes unstoppable and fights more aggressively for 3.5 seconds. That's where you have to fight a bit more passively just so you don't get wrecked while he's unstoppable. Then finally at 10% is when he places the displacements. So he will place 2 every time he hits you and every time you block but don't parry he will place 1. These can't be removed in any way and once you have 20 on you you get knocked out instantly. So with all that being said I think it's quite clear why Aegon is such a good counter. He counters evade with true accuracy but also has that ability accuracy reduction. He doesn't rely on any debuffs, his primary source of damage comes from big yellow numbers but they aren't that big so you won't have to worry about hitting the protection cap. And of course the unblockable which makes it so much easier to find those openings so you won't have to rely so much on blocking so less chip damage or less intercepting. The unstoppable can also be quite handy in case you get hit while it's active at least you can stop him from dropping a full combo on you. So I believe Corvus was or is the most popular alternative to Aegon for this fight since he has the true strike and a similar form of damage although you do need to bring Proxima for synergy so Corvus can have the true strike. But now we have Falcon who counters evade pretty well with his lock on ability, doesn't rely on any debuffs or synergies and deals damage in a very similar way. So he could be the new next best option for this fight. Cause as you can see my rank 3 is doing okay, it's not like crazy not doing a whole ton of damage in one fight. But it's decent you know, he is boosted quite a bit, uh, greater boosts are active right now. But still I think he's very comparable to a Corvus with suicides or even a Professor X. I'm thinking he might be a good alternative as well, although I'm not sure how he would do without the WAG synergy. But yeah, Falcon is putting in work and I'm not even that good at fighting him. My special dexing is not very consistent as you can see, although it did get a little bit better as the fight progressed. I just haven't practiced and I probably should have, 
But ever since I explored Abyss, I've just been so lazy to go back into Act 5, Chapter 2 and just fight him a couple of times. I think I've done it about 3 times in total, ever since I explored Act 5 back in 2017. So if that's your main sticking point, then I would recommend just going back into Act 5 and practicing a few times. And I am also going to give you some advice on dealing with these special attacks. So the first part of your special one can actually be fully dexed quite consistently. You just have to time your dex at the time that it would hit you. I know that might sound a bit odd, but the timing is actually so tight that if you time it slightly early, like dex before it hits you, you'll get caught at the end of it. It is so much better to be slightly late than slightly early on the special one dex. And you can always block the first hit and then dex the rest of the first part. Or just block the whole thing if you really want. There's not much harm to it, doesn't do that much damage. It's only in the last 10% of the fight where he applies the displacement debuffs. That's when you ideally want to be parrying whenever you block. That's also the part that's the most difficult, so I like to run High Assassin for it, if it doesn't cost me more than reviving more. And then for the second part, I don't even try to dex the second part, I just block most of it, and then I'll try to dex the last bit of it. And if you're quick enough, you should be able to punish. Then for the special 2, at first I was trying to dex most of it by blocking I think 2 hits out of it, but I wasn't very consistent at it, and there's a point where if you're blocking, you can't actually dash back without releasing your block, the game just won't allow it for some reason. Kind of feels like you're in quicksand, but yeah, I did get hit a few times while trying to do that. So eventually I switched to blocking the first two or three hits of it, and then dexing the rest, which I was able to do a lot more consistently. But this special attack can be fully dexed. I've actually only done it once, which was um, not long ago. It was actually the last time I fought the Collector in Act 5, where I used Red Goblin. And this was just pure luck really, there was no skill or technique involved in this, I just fortunately timed it just right and got the full dex. Once. I'm sure there's already a few good how to dex collector guides, but I would need to practice a lot more before making a hand cam version. Also, this is one fight where a rank 2 6 star is significantly better than a rank 5 5 star, just because of adrenaline, because you take a lot of block damage in this fight, so being able to regen just a small portion of that makes a pretty big difference. You also get hit, or at least I get hit sometimes as well, so being able to mitigate some of that damage is almost like having an extra 30% health. So now we're getting to the end of the second fight, I got him down to 71% health, just got him into the skirmish charges, then I just mistimed the decks on the special one, got clipped by the end of it, and yeah, I just went down with the stun. And then this is when my recording failed, so I started a new recording after saving this one, but I guess my iPad ran out of space during this recording, and usually it'll tell me, like it'll give me a nice little pop-up notification, you know, saying uh, disk space low or something. Then it will stop the recording and save it, but this time it didn't do any of that, no notification, didn't even save any of the recording. So I ended up losing about 25% of the fight, I didn't get anything from 71% to 45%. Which really bummed me out, not gonna lie, because I really wanted to upload a full fight, and you know, just doing it all over again is gonna take quite a bit of time. Especially with my Abyss playing schedule, I mean, when did I start this part? Um, the day I uploaded Falcon against the Abyss Luke Cage, but yeah, so I ended up making a poll just asking if I should redo the whole thing and get the full fight or just upload what I have, and most people went with just go with what I have, uh, so here we are. I ended up using an extra 2 revive to get him from 71% to fighting him at 45%. So this fight is happening after the 4th revive, basically. He's about to hit 40% and get all those immunities, although stun immunity is the only one that matters and the fight becomes slightly more difficult I guess, but he already had that high tenacity so parry stunning was never really that reliable. Oh and one thing I almost forgot to mention is whenever the collector gains a fracture or gains a new ability when he drops to a new health threshold, he'll place a time warp on you which is basically like a power sting but kind of works in reverse so when it expires instead of getting stunned you'll take the power sting damage and the only way to remove it is by knocking him down. So if you land a successful special attack you'll remove it but you won't take the power sting damage. And that's why I threw special once when I got him to 85%, 70% and now 40%. Because if that time warp expires, it'll take 50% of your current health. It lasts for 20 seconds, so that should be enough time to throw one special one if you play fairly aggressively enough. I haven't actually tried heavy punishing his heavy attack, I wasn't sure it would work with Falcon. And I didn't want to risk it, so I just played it safe and used the special one. But of course that isn't a problem if you're using Aegon since he has the unstoppable heavy attack, so knocking him down is actually very easy. 
In fact, that's usually ideally how you want to start the fight. You want to just go in and drop a heavy attack and intentionally get hit because the damage will be capped at, I believe, 5% if I remember correctly. And of course, you'll get those big boy furies which do so much for Aegon's damage. And in terms of mastery setup, the most important one is probably Limba after the essentials, parry and dex. Bull power can be helpful, like if you get hit by a special 2, then at least you can heal from the debuffs it applies. Then the rest is just your standard mastery build for whoever you're using. You know, I like running max glass cannon and having one point in courage. I'd usually have one point in assassin and max deep wounds, but in a fight like this, I might switch to uh, max assassin and one point in deep wounds. But I generally only switch masteries if the cost isn't higher than whatever the revive cost would be if I weren't to switch. So yeah, that's pretty much it I think. I might have missed one or two things, but I think I covered all the important stuff. And of course you can always read his abilities when you get to the fight, and I will include them at the end of the video. So yeah man, Falcon has to be one of the best options for this fight, especially if you don't have Aegon. Really glad I finally got to try out this fight because I always had a hunch after using him on a Abyss thing a couple of months ago. I'm using a rank 3, 660, nearly max boosted Falcon and took him down in 8 or 9 revives. Um, I think it was 8, but I might need to double check. Uh, it'll probably be in the thumbnail or the title or something, but yeah. Maybe now I can make a more comprehensive Abyss guide since I have more than enough data. I mean, my Abyss playlist is at least 100 videos big right now. So let me know if you guys would like to see an ultimate Abyss guide where I break down each path and suggest a team for it. Maybe also recommend some best counters for certain fights. And of course have everything in a pretty little spreadsheet, then display it in video format so I can explain everything. So if this video gets just 1000 likes, we can make that happen. I'm kidding, I'm probably gonna do it regardless of how many likes this video gets. But it is gonna take me a bit of time to compile and cross check everything. So yeah, stay tuned for that I guess. So that's gonna be it for this video, hope you guys found it interesting. If you did, you know which buttons to hit, but as always, thank you for watching, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon.
Thank you.